What's happening, gang? It's your boy Retro back again with another reaction video. Yeah, yeah. Today we got another huge up. There's now seeing Fox News host Jessica Tarloff making her case coming out with a statement as to why she does not belong on the set of Fox News The Five alongside all the great minds like Judge Janine, Greg Gutfeld. In this newest segment, guys, we've got Jessica Tarloff coming out with another one of those Trump deranged takes that is about ready to get her booted off the set of Fox News The Five. I'm excited to get to clip see exactly what's going on. So we're going to get straight into it. I'll save all my thoughts for the back end, guys. Definitely stick around to the end so you guys get my thoughts on the back end and also youtube pushes this video out definitely stick around till the end you guys but let's get straight into it before we do that though make sure you guys hit that like button for me and also hit that subscribe button as we're on the road to the truth hop aboard for the journey let's get into it programming and that people would have liked to have seen it but the truth of the matter is we don't have much time and this was joe biden's decision and the delegates a lot of them have spoken out about this they voted for or they're representing joe biden's wishes and he is part of the biden harris administration and in that sense, it makes sense that this was her nomination. So I, it, we have three and a half weeks until the DNC. We have 102 days until the election. I'm fine with this. She represents a lot of where the party is and not the Kamala Harris of 2020, but the Kamala Harris of today. And that is the maneuver that she's going to have to make. And I think that she has a lot to say. I mean, if you watch the whole video, for instance, uh, when she was talking about defunding the police, the point she was making is really salient. She was talking about what a safe neighborhood looks like. And it's not crawling with cops, right? It has great schools. It has thriving small businesses. It has really high home ownership, which has been a priority of the Biden-Harris administration to make sure that people can get on the property ladder. I mean, the proof is in the pudding, as it were, of what the Biden-Harris administration did it. <laughs> the most delicious flavor of it at all. You know, they have invested more in law enforcement than any other administration in history. Donald Trump actually proposed a 58 percent cut to the community policing program. They put 3,700 police officers on the street through that program. Another 100,000 that came in through the Safer America plan. The American Rescue Plan had $15 billion in it for crime and policing to make sure that we have safer communities. It's a strong record to run on. The border right now, we were talking about this. Jennifer Griffin was tweeting about the two uh, Sinaloa cartel bosses mm -hmm. that were apprehended. She said that it was like catching the bin Laden, catching bin Laden when it comes to the war against fentanyl. That happened under the Biden-Harris administration. Encounters at the border are down 55 percent since the executive order. These hitting, are all things out of hitting numbers that it, had wildly spiked after the Trump I, administration. I You're not back down to those numbers. I understand that. And you obviously have to acknowledge that there were huge spikes. But it doesn't mean that she's the same person that you saw in 2020. She oversaw the implementation well, of the policies that have led to all of these good results. OK, so she owns this then. All of the policies of this administration. Do you worry, Greg, that there's always that honeymoon period? We keep talking about this. It shows up for any candidate D or R when they're new to the race. Because it's so close to the election, do you feel there will be a full vetting of her actual record? Well, I, the media always follows this predictable, predictable pattern. And it, I don't think I don't think the American people are going to fall for this. We're in this now this period of Kamala denialism. Right. It's like we're, the world is in a serious place. America is in a serious place. We have uh, malaise. We have unrest. We have kind of a lack of adult supervision. Like who's who's in charge? So they need to portray her as the serious person who could handle this. But you can't do that if the person was for defunding the police, if the person was for open borders, if the person likes to take credit for the Afghanistan withdrawal, how soon are they going to rewrite that one? There's so many things that she says that contributes to her kind of unserious persona that they need to erase this stuff. And they're doing it right in front of us. You know, I talked about this before. The definition of arrogant stupidity is when you try to gaslight a bunch of people. It's like, you know, try, it's like those, hypnoti those hypnotists who try to hypnotize everybody and everybody's there going, this is BS. You can gaslight one person alone. I can say to Kennedy, wear your glasses. And you're saying they're on your face. And I'll say, wear your glasses. I can get you to think maybe you're crazy, but you can't do that. To millions of people. And you can't do that when there's so much evidence out there. It, it is amazing to me that the media will continue to do this. And I go back to the fact that I everybody should remember what Twitter was like when it was still owned by the old crew. Uh, if it was owned by those pre-Musk people, 
you wouldn't see the pushback over uh, police defunding. The borders are bailing out felons. None of that. St- all that stuff would be suppressed like Hunter's laptop story. It would be buried like Jimmy Hoffa. But now it's like it's like Twitter or X has turned everybody into their own debunkers. And so I wonder how the legacy media can still uh, maintain this gaslighting role if the public can so quickly and easily call them out on it. And it's because they just assume their allies are there for them and they can continue doing this. I mean, it is comedy to watch them do this and they're still doing it. But I think what I, to back to your point about the honey, the honeymoon's among the media. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not, there's no honeymoon for people who are going to the grocery store and seeing the prices or dealing with crime in their cities or their lack of police. And, and the other thing that gets glossed over by the media is the fact that not only is Kamala Harris the most radically left-wing Pre, uh, politician who's ever run for president, but she's running against the least ideological, least partisan, most common sense sort of practical politician that we've ever had in you my know, You're like the only person that thinks that. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no. Okay. If you look at the that issues, he, if, uh, that, that he's the common most sense? common sense. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That, well, you look at the border, you look at all of those issues, you, you look at the you look at the issue of abortion that's gotten that, that has gotten him into, yeah. into trouble. Okay. All, all of those things. Uh, th- he said, yeah, it's up to the states. I did this. There are six-week abortion bans yeah, that even in, in his own with state. His own yeah, but remember, yeah. there like, are also, he's not in, in trouble with Democrats. He's in trouble with evangelical Republicans, but he's to be still tougher. standing for a more practical stance there are also there are also states uh, as our you know democracies our laboratory of democracies are also states that go through the and jd Vance and so, doesn't want you to even be able to go well, to i don't understand why to, why sending abortion okay. back to the states is somehow worse than having the supreme court or roe v wade you're getting it closer to the community isn't that what it's right. all closer about to we got to go. We're going to take Family Feud into the commercial <laughs> over time. Yo, there we have it, guys. Leave it up to Jessica Tarlov to not see what's actually going on in reality, guys. I'm telling you right now, it's the Trump derangement syndrome. That TDS has her brain, her reality all clouded up. She sees a whole different world, a whole different viewpoint than what all the other Americans see, you know. Um, she goes to the grocery store, you know, the prices are cut in half. She does, she gets a discount for everything. Apparently, you know, um, her bills seem to be, you know, going down while the rest of America is going straight up. Um, she's living in a whole different America. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. It seems that she doesn't see anything that's going on, you know, down at the southern border. It seems to be closed up, sealed for her because just the way she speaks um, so highly on Ms. Kamala Harris and, you know, the Biden administration and what they've done during their term, you know, saying that she's sticking behind, you know, all the policies that, you know, the Biden administration came up with. And she was, you know, Kamala Harris was side by side during all of this. And I'm just thinking like, yeah, they nab those two cartel members. But I mean, the border is still wide open. You, you get the head or, you know, you get the leader. There'll be someone else that was, you know, underneath the leader. He'll step right in that position and it'll continue to go on. I mean, the border is still wide open. It doesn't matter how many cartel members you nab. They're still going to be able to come straight into our country. That was the point I was thinking of that entire time. Jessica Tarlov, I was waiting for Gutfeld to slam her on that. Like, well, if the border is open, it doesn't matter if we got the, the head. They're going to be someone else that slides right in there and starts doing the exact same thing. You know, I'm. Sounds like Jessica Tarlov wants this danger to our country to come on in with Kamala being a very dangerous far leftist, guys. I just don't see how, like Gutfield saying, I don't see how um, that lamestream media, the left wing media is going to be able to cover up gaslight the people to say, you know, she's for, you know, the betterment of America. She wants to patch up the wrongs or the shortcomings of the Biden administration when she sat beside him and she was placed in charge, guys. She was the border czar placed in charge in, of these same issues that she is saying that she's going to come in and rectify. This is another one of those classic tactics coming from the Dems. This is how Biden got in, you know, um, based off of you know, uh, empty promises saying, hey, I'm going to do this when I get, I'm going to do that. We're going to change this, reform that. And he gets in office and, you know, wreaks havoc on America, you know, unsealing, undoing all the great things that Trump had done while he was in office. Guys, definitely hop in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. We're seeing Jessica Tarlov living in a whole different America where she is saying that the Biden administration was nothing but peaches and cream. Definitely hop in the comment section, guys, and let me know your thoughts. Did Biden administration's policies help or hinder our economy guys definitely hop in the comment section let me know what you're thinking also make sure you guys hit that share button share us out to as many facebook friends as possible you guys share the truth also make sure you guys hit that like button doesn't cost you one thing you guys hit that like button for your boy and also with that subscribe button as we're on the road to the truth hop aboard for the journey i'll catch you guys on the next one week God.